There aren't going to be very many of these double passage questions on the digital SAT, so if you're struggling with these, don't worry about them. Just do the best you can and just try to move on as quickly as possible so you don't waste too much time on this question. Sometimes with these, I do find it helpful to go in a different order. Uh, depending on way, the way the question is worded, sometimes it makes more sense to like read passage two first uh, and then go to passage one, especially if they're like, what would passage two say about passage one or, or vice versa? So. In this case, I don't, I don't see that need. I, it seems like they're just asking what the two passages agree on, so I, whatever order I read them in, I'm still looking for the same thing. What are they both saying? So I'm just gonna go in the normal order here. They don't say passage one, but Friar's team is very clearly mentioned there, so it's clear we're, we're talking about both passages. So what do they agree on? Let's get the most basic, dumb summary version of that as possible. Text one, microbes are tiny organisms in the soil, water, and air all around us. They thrive even in very harsh conditions. That's why Noah Fryer and colleagues were surprised when soil samples they collected from an extremely cold, dry area in Antarctica didn't seem to contain any life. The finding doesn't prove that there are no microbes in that area, but the team says it does suggest that the environment severely restricts micro survival. So what is one saying? Basically, it says there are few microbes in the Antarctic. So they didn't find any, but they seem to be going out of their way to say that there maybe there are still are some there, but they just didn't happen to find any. So I don't want to say none. That's a little bit more extreme, and, and I get the sense that that's that they're kind of avoiding that on purpose. But let's look at two, see if that says anything different. Microbes are found in virtually every environment on Earth, so it's unlikely they would be completely absent from Fryer's team's study site, no matter how extreme the environment is. There were probably so few organisms in the samples that current technology couldn't detect them, but since a spoonful of typical soil elsewhere might contain billions of microbes, the presence of so few in the Arctic uh, soil samples would show how challenging the conditions are. So they said the word few multiple times, so it's kind of the same thing. Few microbes in the Antarctic. So they get into more detail. Maybe it has to do with the equipment, but like I want something that they're both talking about. And so passage one is not talking about the equipment and the technology that's available. It's just saying what they found or, or didn't find, but that that's just a different idea than the technology piece. But passage two is also talking about this particular study and what they found. So I want that connection, but I want it represented in the simplest way possible. So my dumb summary here is that yeah, there's few microbes in the Antarctic. They both seem to be agreeing on that. So let's look at the choices and see what we can get. Choice A, most microbes are better able to survive in environments with extremely dry conditions than environments with harsh temperatures. Well, this is a comparison question, or choice, I should say. It, it's trying to say uh, a comparison between two different types of microbes, or I guess environments where you might find them. So is are these passages comparing, let's say, cold areas to dry areas? No, we're only ever talking about one area, the Antarctic. So I, I don't, I don't really know what's going on here with this choice. Is it's bringing in a comparison that these passages aren't making? I guess in passage two, it does say that a typical soil sample elsewhere might have lots of microbes, but it doesn't say anything about the conditions in that in that typical sample, right? Are they colder, warmer, uh, more uh, dry, or less dry? I, I don't really know. So this is just getting into comparisons that we have no basis for. So we want to avoid that. And in general, when you see an answer choice making comparisons in the SAT, you should be skeptical. Are they actually making that comparison in the text or is it kind of a made up comparison for the purposes of tricking you? So in this case, it's a trick. Don't pick it. B, a much higher number of microbes would probably be found if another sample of soil were taken from the Antarctic study site. No, they don't say that. They're, they seem to be criticizing the Antarctic a, a, as a place where it's just hard for microbes to exist. Whether there are none there or just very, very few, that's kind of what the debate is about. But they're not saying that if they had just like moved over two feet, they would have found lots of microbes. That's not what they're saying. So I'm also just bothered in general by um, choices that introduce the idea of quantity or start quantifying things. Uh, it makes me nervous because we would need to have that same quantification in uh, the passage itself. However, all these choices kind of involve quantities in some way. They all kind of use words like most or much. So that does soften that trap a little bit, but um, they do definitely are not talking about another comparison to another soil sample somewhere else nearby. That's just not what comes up. C, microbes are likely mm, difficult to detect in the soil at the Antarctic study site because they tend to be smaller than microbes found in typical soil elsewhere. No, the size of these things is never talked about. It's how many they found, not how big they are. I, they never talk about that. So it's probably D, but we should always read it. 
Most microbes are probably unable to withstand the soil conditions at the Antarctic study site. Yes, that's probably why there are so few. They say that it's a harsh condition, the Antarctic is cold and dry and whatever, and so it's just very difficult for the microbes to live. That doesn't mean that there's none, but it does mean that it makes it much harder. And we also see that even though we have this very strong word most, uh, we also have this kind of weak word, probably, right? And that's a nice little science word because it, it gives us that wiggle room that we want. Very rarely in science are we definitively saying that one thing is true and, and another isn't. It's much more about probabilities and likelihood. And so uh, that bothers me there, or that's sorry, that, that makes it much better of a choice because it is a little bit softer. Um, but yeah, this is a choice that we just kind of matches with our dumb summaries, don't overthink it. And like I said, we were able to prove the other choices wrong. So that's a, a double confidence booster, right? Our best case scenario on any passage-based question is that we simultaneously can prove the right answer correct and we can prove the wrong answers wrong. Sometimes you got to do one versus the other a little bit more, but that's our ultimate goal is you want to kind of attack it from both sides so that you're doubly confident that you're right.